Hello, this is Don Zablansky of Colonial Metalsmithing. I want to go over a couple of things on this episode that I forgot to talk about on the last episode. And this was when I formed these tops or the inner tops of a turn tin. Turn tin is very, very stiff. And when I put a wire in it, you can see that it ended up having a misconfiguration. In other words, there was no way I could roll it to get it nice and round. You can see, if you look at it from this dimension, how it's out of round. You know, basically, junk. But then I decided to change the technique a little bit, and in lieu of putting a rolled edge in, I put a double hem seam in, which means you fold it over once and then you again and that gives you a decorative edge and you can actually run this through the slip rolls and it rolls out nicely so to add a little more decoration I put this swedge bead in that you can see right here and you know I had something that turned out kind of bad and the bottom line was it eventually turned out pretty decent I used this machine, which is another com combination rotary machine. It's pretty much single purpose because this thing is probably 150 years old, but the swedging beads are what gives the swedge of this configuration. So then after I did that, I said, well, let me try something a little different. And I have another single purpose decorative swedging tool and it's a double bead and here's one with a double bead in. So, you know, something that turned out as, you know, a lemon, I made into lemonades because I decided to change the process and decided to do a few things different. In fact, I like this better than I liked the plain old turn. So then I went back and took the, br the brass top and I put a swedge in it too. So there you go. Innovation strikes. Now I told you that this episode would, be, would involve putting all the components that we had made so far together. This is my alignment jig for putting together the top, the back, and the bottom of the Dutch Steamboat Lantern. And as I told you, it was important to hold everything in place. One, so that the heat doesn't distort the metal and it's a lot easier to solder. Second of all, it's really important to have everything square because it, if it isn't, when you go to put the glass in, it just won't fit properly. Now this is kind of a contraption here with a bunch of counterweights. That's just so I can hold it in place to solder it. The soldering process is relatively easy. On my tin the iron, I've already applied my no crowd and I'll start right here and the first pass is to primarily fill the joint with solder and preheat the joint. The second pass is a touch-up pass to add solder where required, but also is used to smooth the joint to give it a clean appearance. Okay. So that does the bottom. Now I'll take all my counterweights off. And flip this over. Okay, that pretty well completes the soldering of these components. Okay, so now I'm going to check to see how square it is. And as you can see, 
or it is actually quite square. Let me check it this way. So, so that is the reason why you have all the clamps and everything. Now, the form was made with a one inch spacer so that it could be easily removed from the finished product. And there you have the component. You can always check it by putting it on a fairly flat and level surface. Perfect. Um, so that's a pretty good job. Okay, the next thing to do is put the columns on. I've already pre-tinned these, put them in position. Okay, so I, now I have everything clamped in place. Um, and I've checked it to make sure that it is and continues to be at right angles. I'll check it this way too. Um, it actually is just where it needs to be. Now solder is, when you solder these things together they became extremely rigid. You don't have any flexibility to move things around, which is a good thing. I am soldering the columns at the top and bottom. Then I will proceed to the inside and solder the columns from the inside so the joints and solder is not shown. Okay, so here we have the completed box structure, if you will. Um, you can see this solder joint on the top. Uh, you can see the soldered edges on the bottom. As you recall, we cut out these mirror holders and the back of these lanterns have mirrors that are located at the are attached at the top and the bottom and they're angled for a couple of reasons. One, it gives better light deflection, but two, it's a source of and a way of hiding all the electrical wires. Now, this was actually already folded and you know how to do that. I showed you how to do that in the bar folder, but what I need to do is I need to fold it into the right configuration. There we are. I used a large pair of hand pliers and then I'll put the mirror retainer clips. So the way this is set up, pretend that this is the mirror. It actually will sit inside the clip. I use this as my spacer and I put some clamps on it to hold it in place. There are two mirror retaining clips on each side, one left, one right. It is often beneficial to tilt the work so that the solder flows freely into the joint. It is also important to have a comfortable position to hold the solder iron because that gives you the needed control to properly place the solder. There we have it. I'll take out the clamps. I always try to clean these parts as I go because they're really more accessible. To achieve a nicely finished joint, it is all often useful to go over the joint a second time just applying heat and smoothing out the solder that is already existing. Okay so now I'm going to flip around to the back in the same process. The work is tilted to help fill the solder joints in a neat fashion. Once the joint is completely full it is beneficial to take a hot soldering iron across the joints to help smooth out some of the ripples that may exist. Okay, as you can see, that's a pretty good job for soldering. It's You can never get it perfect, but one of the benefits of 
having this piece, which is the back, overlap the top is when you do these joints, they're covered up. So that takes care of putting the top on, but obviously we're not done yet because the next thing we have to do is put in the mirror holder and then we put in the font holder. And that gives you the basic lantern. It, it, it still needs the doors, which we haven't manufactured. Some of them are going to have grills on them, which we haven't manufactured. We have all the little knickknacks like the, tinge, the hinges and all the glass clips and the bottom feet. And there's a lot of little detail stuff after you get to this point. But at least when you look at this, you go, all right, we're making progress. We have something that looks like a lantern. Okay, so there's the bottom. Uh, as you can see, with a couple of tacks to hold it in place. Now here's the font that would go in there. And yay, it fits. Of course, I checked it before I did that. So basically, that's the assembly of the major components that we've had. We are now going to solder on the inner cone and this process is a little bit different than we use than when we use tin where we actually have to solder it in place. As I mentioned before, we have already tinned the parts and I've already put on the solder paste. So I've clamped this in place and I've aligned it so that it is pretty well aligned um, and centered. So then I just take my torch and as you can see I'm applying pressure on the top. Pretty much that's how you do it. Now on this you saw me make this piece um, I put rivets in it. These are falsies. They don't go all the way through. Um, they could do that, but I decided just to make them decorative and with a handle on it. Now, this is the same situation. I would put that on. It actually lines up pretty nicely. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go with this. Now you have to be careful that you don't unsolder the corner post. And like I said, a little dab will do you. You can see there's a little bit burnt there, um, but that's not a big deal. And the back side gets the same treatment with it being clamped in place. And as you can see, it's got a nice tight joint and that's perfect. Okay, as you can see, we have five Dutch steamboat lanterns roughed out. Um, this is, of course, the one that's 15 inches tall. This is the one that I put the handle on it. And, of course, these two are red brass. This one here is zinc and they're basically all the same configuration. This one here is turn tin. You can see it has a different patina than the zinc. And of course this is the tin plate. And a tin plate would be much brighter. So that completes this part of the episode. Um, the next episode is going to be the detail work. First of all, we have to make the doors to put on. We have to put the glass clips on the inside. We got to put the feet on the bottom. And that's all time consuming things, but it's got to be done. But we're getting pretty close to finishing this, these lanterns, of course. Then we have to polish them and spray paint them with varnish and then the final step is glass and electrification. 
So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Bye.